back to the Control Freak Podcast. I am your host, Les Alex, and today we are delving into the age-old question in Azorius Control in Pioneer. Do we play Kahira, or should we be playing not Kahira, whether that be just no companions at all, or possibly Yorion? I have a special guest today, my good friend, Evan Bruce. Evan, what's up? Hey, what's going on, man? Happy to be here. How's your day going? Oh, it's it's going pretty good. Pretty good. Yeah. We uh it's a good day. It was a good day. How was yours? Honestly, I'm not working today, so I'm happy. <laughs> there you go. It's always a good day. Thanks everybody for watching. Before we get started, I do have, of course, some housekeeping. Um, I do want to shout out our brand new patron over at patreon.com slash less alex michael eubanks thank you so much for your patronage and i do appreciate you they subscribed to the ten dollar to fairy tier and that is the highest tier so thank you so much for that if you would like to support the content um, you can do so for less than a dollar an episode by heading over to patreon.com slash less alex every patreon will receive an awesome control freak sticker along with other perks based on which level you uh, subscribe to. So go check that out if you are interested. And, of course, you get a shout-out at the top of every podcast as well. So thank you again to all the amazing uh, control freaks over there on Patreon. And specifically, again, thank you, Michael, for your patronage. As a reminder, the podcast can be found on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Podbean, Stitcher, and basically wherever you can find any other podcasts, as well as I live stream on Twitch and my Facebook. So check that out. That's Les Alex, the control freak over on Facebook and twitch.tv slash Les Alex. If you want to catch the stream live and the podcast live, I do stream Monday through Friday at 9 a.m. Central, playing Azorius Control and many other Pioneer and Modern decks. Um and if you want to do something and support the content directly just for free, head on over to Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Give me a five-star review over there on either of those platforms. It really does help out the algorithm and all that stuff. Whew. All right. Out of the way. We're done with the housekeeping. Thank you, Michael. Again, I do appreciate you. But now it is time to talk. Yorion. Kahira or no companion in Pioneer Azorius Control. If you don't know, Frank Karsten just released a massive, massive data dump on his Twitter. So let's kind of transition over there. This is the tweet that he sent out not too long ago. And so as we can see here, if you're watching, but if you're listening, there is a metagame breakdown. And now this is compiled from so much data, so many sources of tournaments and online and paper, RCQs and things of that nature. <clears throat> and right there at number two, the second most played deck in Pioneer currently. Again, this is paper and moto. At 10.3% of the metagame in second, edged out by Rakdos midrange at 12.2, is, of course, our beloved Azorius Control. I'm hyped for this. Evan, what is what does this graph tell you? <laughs> uh, I mean, I think it says a lot of what we already knew. I think if you asked anyone playing Pioneer in the last year, what's the best deck in the format? Uh, I think you'd get one of those top four decks. Oh yeah. So if, if you're not the time. if you're not watching, we've got Rakdos mid range, Azorius Control at number two at ten point three. We've got Abzan Greasefang at nine point three, and then Mono Green Devotion at seven point six. Um, Is it Creativity at six point two? Lotus Field at five percent. Neoform Atraxa, which is a very new deck, um, but already gaining. Immense population at 4.6% uh, of the metagame share. 
This is some incredible statistic. Obviously, Frank does an amazing job. He's a great follow on Twitter. If you aren't following him, go over there at Karsten underscore Frank. He is uh, basically Wizards analytics and stat guy, and he has been for, I don't know. Long time. As long as I can remember. Um, yeah. But he does have a article here on magic.gg as well. So we can check that out. I think there's a couple of things that uh, surprise me about this list. I'm really surprised Phoenix is as low as it is. What is it at? 2.3%. Yeah, I mean, it has I, been waning in recent weeks, right? But but I mean, something like Enigmatic Fires is 3.4%. Oh, yeah. And... Which, like, it, don't get me wrong, I play Fires. I love yeah. that deck. <laughs> but I wouldn't expect more people to play that competitively than Phoenix. And another awesome thing here is we have, or rather, Frank has put where their, uh, whether it is an ascending deck or a descending deck. So I really love that. If you want to check this article out, I will leave that in the description of today's show notes. Um, I'm going to scroll down here to our deck, which is Azorius Control, of course. Now, he notes here that there is a uh, different builds, right? We, we've got the 80 card builds with Yorion. We've got the 60 cards with Kihiro with the Kitty Cat Parade. We talked to Claudio last week. He came on the show and uh, explained some of his uh, sideboard choices and just overall uh, reasoning by, behind card choices in the deck. But and that was a great episode, very insightful. Go check that out if you haven't yet. But, um, uh, Strict Proctor. So, this is another version of the deck that I actually haven't played yet. Have you played the Lotus Field version of Azorius Control? I have not yet. I um, have. It's, uh, it's a lot of fun. It's however, way... I, I feel however coming on. I mean, it, it you lose the consistency of traditional blue white control. Yeah. You know, you get these awkward hands of turn two Proctor, turn three play Lotus Field, and they kill Proctor on the stack. Ugh, yeah. So now you're just, I mean, like, sure, you have your three mana. Yeah. But you're you're way behind at that point. Yeah, and for those who don't know, Strict Proctor is a two mana, so it can be fatal pushed. Uh, it is a Spirit Cleric, one three with flying, and whenever a permanent enters the battlefield... Uh, that causes a triggered ability to trigger counter it unless it's controller plays two. This works really well with Lotus Field because obviously you can opt to just not pay it, and it is a trigger when it enters, so you just basically get a Lotus Field for free. Um, and they play discontinui discontinuity as well. To discontinuity. In discontinuity, that's the name of it. Whatever the name is. <laughs> um, but yeah, they play that, so you can get some really fun shenanigans ending the turn and ending the stack and all those things. Um, it is super powerful, I will say. Yeah, it's definitely, definitely super powerful. He goes on to say that uh, new cards like Sunfall and Change the Equation are starting to show up. Those are cards that in my uh, top five cards uh, to look out for in Azorius Control definitely are starting to show up. So that's really cool to see. Uh, you know, kind of Kobe called my shot on that one. Uh, um, but, and then he also notes Elspeth's champion is a sideboard card that is regularly in these decks. And then what's really cool is he's got an aggregate deck list and it's interesting here. He's in his aggregate desk list. He's only playing two. Uh, it came up with only two laydown arms. I think that's based on the fact that there are still people that are not playing laydown arms. <laughs> I mean, I would say there's still a pretty decent percentage that aren't. And I would say to those people, why? <laughs> because you know, was, sorry, what's that? No, no, no. no. Well, I, I'm I'm just I've been on the uh, laydown arms version basically since the card came out. It was one of my top picks for cards from that set as well. And the only reason I have heard from folks as to why they're not playing laydown arms is because it hurts the mana base. Uh, and though that is true. A little bit. I think people overvalue a lot of our utility lands. Like oftentimes we're not winning with Castle Ardenvale 
Obviously, in the laydown arms version, you can't play that card just because all your white sources have got to be planes. Um, so I don't know if you want to talk about that for a sec. Um, laydown arms. Say, what's that? Well, two things I think in, interesting about his aggregate list connected or at least one thing connected to this there's no prairie streams in his mana base at all yeah which is again i think indicative of the fact that not everybody is getting on board with laydown arms yeah and again we're gonna jump into some more information here um if you want to check out like i said frank karsten's article is amazing he is the best in the biz when it comes to overall format statistics and analytics breakdown because he he goes so in depth but what we are looking for is the percentages of uh not only win rate but just overall which is better are we should we play kahira should we not play kahira um i've been playing kahira in my paper list and i've been playing kahira if you watch my streams you know i've been playing it on stream as well but we have a Twitter user, Azorius I, a great Twitter follow. If you guys aren't following them, they're excellent, um, and they come out with amazing pieces of statistical and analytical breakdowns like this, which we're going to jump into right, right now. Um, so on screen, they said that they read the, the Frank Karsten Pioneer metagame, and then they wanted to go deeper in on it. So they have this little graph here. So this is lay down arms um, on moto and lay down arms uh, in paper. And we have the lists that aren't playing it versus the lists that are. So in paper, 58.9% uh, are not playing lay down arms. 41.1% uh, are playing lay down arms and then online the percentages uh get even more skewed towards not playing it where it's 63.6 versus 36.4 um so that kind of tells you where control players heads are at they're not bought in now one thing and i'm sure this is true for you because you are also a control player at heart i know you said you're playing fires but I mean, I, I play a lot of things, let's be real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And as do I, as do I. I've, I've started, uh, you know, branching out for content purposes. But if I were to go to a tournament, like an RCQ or whatever, I would definitely be playing um, Lay Down Arms, Kahira version of the deck. Um, but as I was saying before I get too far off on a tangent, control players were very analytical, but also we are hard-pressed to change unless something is like stone cold proven to us that it is the better way to do things. And I think that's why you see this discrepancy in today's metagame, even though as the information I'm about to share with you says that the folks that are not playing lay down arms are just statistically incorrect here um, because lay down arms. I mean, yes, it's a sorcery. Yes. It takes a deck building, uh, style and you have to you know obviously alter your mana base but it's a very powerful card i mean it's it's very very good i mean i think a lot of like a lot of the argument of the castle being involved or not is kind of irrelevant even a yeah. lot of decks without lay down arms are moving away from that in favor of mirix anyway well and one thing also, it's not just the castle and it's not just the Ganjo, the utility land, the channel right. land from uh, Kamigawa Dion Dynasty, but it's the fact that there are a little bit more uh, tap lands. So you can have those awkward turns where you need to draw an untapped, you know, a tale as old as time, right? <laughs> you need to draw a supreme ver uh, a land to cast your supreme verdict against mono white humans or against mono green or whatever or against Rakdos and you draw the irrigated farmland and you would not have that problem in uh, a traditional non lay down arms uh, I version. mean even in a non lay down arms version you're playing at least what two farmland and you know some amount of cycling lands yeah 
Yeah. I, I, I think the percentage that increases by playing four is fairly negligible when the payoff is one of the best white pieces of removal in the format. Yeah. Um, and so now here on screen, we have a breakdown of what um, what companions folks are using and playing in paper and in and on moto. So in paper, we've got 4.7% are playing uh, Yorian. 13.4% are playing Kihira, and then 819 are not playing either, which is wild to me. That I mean, because usually you're playing one or the other. And then on the other graph here, we have uh, general deck strategy and moto. We've got the strict proctor version. So it would appear that folks in paper just don't even want to mess <laughs> with the strict proctor version. Um, I don't know if that's because they, you know, you don't want to purchase the Lotus fields or I don't really know what could lead to the fact that there's just stone cold zero in the, uh, in this, you know, I mean, there's over what, 250 decks, you know, 250 samples here. Sample size is quite large. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the fact that there are zero strict, uh, strict proctor versions, is uh kind of eye opening, and I wonder, I wonder why that is. if it is just in you know what wherever uh this information was pulled from. So I think, he, I think he said what dream hack. Well, he does link uh a bunch, well, it's just a ton of RCQs and okay. moto uh challenges and preliminaries. So this is a large sample size, folks. Yeah, uh, this isn't you know just like a local f and m i mean azorius i is an excellent follow on twitter <laughs> um but well, sure we're taking this information we're trying to you know figure out what is going to be best moving forward uh but as i was saying strict proctor in paper or i'm sorry on moto has a 4.2 percent of the overall uh sample size yorion has an 18.6 kihira has a 22.9 and then neither has a 54.2 which is, you know, qu quite a bit. Um, I like I said, I've been on Kahira um, and the Kitty Cat Parade. You know, obviously Claudio's been putting up a lot of results with it. Uh, George Jabor has been putting up results with it on Moto as well. So, I mean, it's hard to deny it for me. Um, he goes on to say, overall, it seems I regi uh, like registered lay down arms is correct, which I definitely agree with. Um, lay down arms is performing versus non lay down arms in paper and on moto. Now, this is the smoking gun, right? <laughs> this is what uh, kind of shows you that lay down arms is the superior uh, version of the deck. We have here lay down arms um uh win rate so yes we're playing uh lay down arms has a in paper has a 57.71 win rate non lay down arms versions have a 53.7 win rate so almost almost five percentage points higher so man it's a great format though when you got control over 50 percent win rates oh yeah baby because it's like <laughs> You know, there's that meme of John and Azorius is the best 50% decks, but here we are, uh, you know, in the high, high 50s, almost to 60%. And then wait till we get to Moto because it gets even better. Obviously, the clock is much more uh, control friendly. <laughs> I'll say on Magic the Gathering Online, you don't have to worry about your opponent and how fast or slow they play because you have a chess clock rather than a normal 50 minute uh, clock. Uh, the win rates on so lay down arms versus not uh, win rate on moto. You guys are going to lose it if you're if you're listening to this. Prepare yourselves. Seventy three point three six when you play lay down. Why would you not play lay down arms with that insane <laughs> win rate? Seventy three percent. I mean, there are and obviously they play a bunch of different decks, but 
These uh, Hall of Famers don't have that kind of win rate. <laughs> I mean, but let's also clarify, even without... Even without does have 71.49. So we're talking, still, what, a percent and a half? Still. I'm taking the higher percentage every time, baby. I mean, absolutely. They're but... still both... I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I don't mean to come off and say that, like... Blue-white is just the way overall. Yeah. Blue-white is, is definitely the the best version uh in the best control deck obviously but yeah so <laughs> moving on down the line we had kahira versus um non kahira right so there is a excellent graph that he laid out here and we have so total win rate is represented by the red line match wins percentage is the blue bar. Yes. Kihira. So we've got 48.57. So that is under 50%, obviously. Um, no lay down arms plus Kihira. There aren't any. <laughs> uh, yes. Kihira and no lay down arms. Um, I'm sorry. Yes, lay down arms with no uh, with no companion is a sixty two point six, and then we've got no lay down arms and no companion at a fifty three point six two, and then no lay down arms plus a uh, Yorian fifty four point five five, and so then, then that's let, in paper. Let me ask you: Does that make you feel compelled to change? Off the kitty cat parade. Well, let's take a look at Moto <laughs> and we'll compare the stats there. Cause I may, I mostly play on Moto. You guys probably know that about me. Uh, I get to play Pioneer in paper maybe once a month if I'm lucky. Cause there's just in the St. Louis area, there's just not many places that play Pioneer and fire Pioneer pretty regularly. It's a very modern based area. So combined lay down arms plus strategy on Moto, we've got yes, uh, lay down arms plus Kihira at 74.1. Um, then we have no lay down arms plus Kihira, 71.4. We've got yes, they're playing lay down arms with no companion at 72.2. And then we've got no lay down arms and no. <laughs> No companion at 70.14. So it definitely seems by that logic and by those metrics, you know, don't don't play play a companion. At the very end of the day, play a companion, whether your flavor is the 80 card variety with Yorian or the Kitty Cat Parade with Kahira, play a companion. And then moving on over to the Yorian statistics, no lay down arms with Yorian. We've got 73.28, and then no plus a proctor. At 78.26, that is nutter butters. Um, and I do want to try the, the Proctor version, but that is the highest win rate of any of the statistics or any of this uh, information. That That's insane. That's almost 80%, y'all. That's nutter butters. I wonder but, what the highest Pioneer win rate has been. You know, like I... I guess general. there's been some pretty nutty decks with insane win rates. Oh, yeah. Um, and then they also go on to kind of give their uh, take on what you should be doing. It says, in conclusion, if you want to take Blue Eye Control to a Pioneer tournament tomorrow, you should probably lean towards Kahira less laydown arms. Despite this, the results are close enough with the best versions. Still play one. Just practice so i agree with that obviously magic the gathering and especially with blue eye control practice makes perfect <laughs> and whether you are playing kahira or you're playing no kahira or you're playing yorian or maybe you're playing the strict proctor which apparently nobody's doing in paper <laughs> but um you gotta practice your lines you gotta just gold even gold fishing can help you know but my best bet would be to get on, on moto fire up a league Get in the tournament practice lobbies and practice because nothing nothing helps like practicing. 
Um, they also go on to say, final note, the non-companion category is extremely diverse in options from the angel plan in the sideboard to hole breaker horror to a bunch of conditional counter spells. There is more that could have been done here, but it would have taken many, many more hours. So, <laughs> um, and then they do link all the statistics to many, many different uh, dates and tournaments. So definitely, definitely go, go follow them on Twitter. This is an excellent resource. So based on all this information, what we're seeing is if you're playing on Moto, you should be playing Kahira lay down arms version. If you're playing paper, you should be playing uh, Kahira less uh, lay down arms version. I mean, let's be real. If you're playing paper, you should just throw everyone for the loop and show up with a proxy because <laughs> apparently no one nobody's does it. doing it. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That that might you know you might be that's a tiny little edge you might be onto. <laughs> I mean, honestly, that would uh because like then they are that do they like huh? Do I keep in my uh spot removal for this proctor or it like makes do, it really awkward for him? It definitely does. Holy smokes. Um but yeah, this is this is what I wanted to get out to you for this week's episode, folks. Um, I know this is a bit of a shorter episode, but you know, I was actually going to do a whole nother topic. We were going to talk about uh, the ban list in Pioneer, and that's kind of an evergreen topic that is, you know, kind of beat to death. And then I saw this excellent thread over on Azorius Eyes Twitter feed, and I was like, "Yo, Ev." we got to cover this. We got to get this information to the people. So this is excellent. I don't know if any of you all follow them, but go do it you because should. it's an excellent follow. And this information is vital. Uh, moving forward though, if you were to play in a tournament, what would you play? If you were playing Azorius control uh, ooh. in paper, in paper, I think I would be on lay down arms without Kahira. No I, lay down arms. I'm not a huge kitty cat parade fan. Oh, dude, it's so I good. Think, I think if I was going to play today, I'd be on lay down arms with the angel package and the sideboard. I really I like Lyra Bane Slayer and Starnheim. Well, you still play Starnheim in the in the lay down arms or in the Kihira version, but sure. Um, well, now there's the new one, the one from Mom. It's got a, oh, what's the name of that new mechanic? Ooh. Um, There's you know, the, the five man, it's a five mana four, four with flying and first strike. And then it has the battle cry or whatever the name of the new mechanic is. Anyways. <laughs> um, but that's also a good card for Azorius control that uh, did not make my top five. Um, but yeah, this is a very comprehensive list. Go check it out. Uh, I hope you guys kind of did enjoy this one. For me, if I were to play in a tournament in paper, there are some RCQs coming up in my area. So I will be looking to hopefully be able to get to go to those. Um, I would be taking Kahira lay down arms version just because it's what I'm comfortable with. And at the end of the day, I'm not saying just because the information is out there. And I mean, quite honestly, the statistics are in lay down arms favor. If you're more comfortable with another version of the deck if you're playing strict pro if you're the one person that plays strict proctor in paper <laughs> then uh you know play that because it's ultimately what you're what you're most comfortable with if you don't have access to magic online or even arena i think arena is so close to pioneer that you can reasonably test for a pioneer tournament with arena obviously they don't yeah. have lotus field on there which is uh a pretty prevalent matchup, but it's pretty. I, I would say they're we're pretty, pretty close. Favored. I I would say we're pretty favored in that matchup as long as we counter the right spells. <laughs> yeah. But if they have God draws, sorry, you just ain't beating that deck. <laughs> um, but yeah, a little bit of a shorter episode this week. Um, again, everybody, thank you, Evan, for hanging out and talking some Kihira versus Yorion versus. Strict Proctor, even though Strict Proctor isn't a companion. <laughs> um, do you have any final thoughts, or it, it, do you want to share where folks can find you on the internet if you want them to? 
Uh, I mean, Evan's much more low key than I am. <laughs> yeah, uh, more to come on that later. <laughs> yeah, uh, but no, I just uh, I think realistically, if you're going into a pioneer tournament right now and uh, you're used to blue white, I think lay down is definitely the way to go, and I think blue white is really in a great position in the format right now and uh, should try it out. Absolutely, absolutely. Well. That uh, that kind of concludes the this week's episode of the Control Freak Podcast. Again, folks, if you want to uh, support, first off, if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure to like the video, especially if you made it this far. Comment down, can comment down below. I'm a control freak. If you made it this far into the video, uh, like, subscribe, share it, of course. And if you want to support the content directly, head on over to patreon.com slash less Alex, where every Patreon member gets a control freak sticker along with other perks based on the tier that you subscribe at. And of course, as a reminder, the podcast can be found on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Podbean, Stitcher, and basically everywhere that you would listen to a podcast. Um, and if you want to help support the content directly, by a freeway head on over to apple Podcasts or spotify give it a five star review and leave a short little uh word of encouragement over on apple that would be excellent or just follow me on twitter i you can find me on twitter and twitch and on facebook now all at less alex and then the facebook is less alex comma the control freak that's the page check it out I appreciate everybody for hanging out with us this week. I hope you did enjoy it. And until next time, keep spreading that Azorius propaganda. Adios, control freaks.